Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Wednesday. Well, this week, I'm still finishing up my kids' Halloween candy and getting rid of the jack-o'-lanterns and getting ready to set the clocks back by an hour this weekend. Now, for a lot of people, that makes this time of the year feel a little bit darker. But if you're interested in seeing things in the night sky, setting the clocks back just makes it all that much easier to see things. Now, of course, it's a little bit arbitrary. Sunset in Chicago is at 538 on Saturday night, and on Sunday it'll be at 437. Now, of course, the things in the sky haven't actually shifted when they're visible, but when they're visible in the course of our daily routine does change. So next week, right after dinner time, I can step outside and see a reasonably dark sky right away. And let's say you go to bed at 11 p.m. usually, and maybe Orion the Hunter has been up just a little bit too late for you. Well, next week, maybe you have a chance because when Orion is visible has shifted by an hour relative to our daily routines. So it's kind of like time travel, sort of, and uh, it works for me and it works for stargazing as well. Well, this week, we're dipping our toes a little bit into those winter skies. Speaking of Orion, the nights are getting a little bit chillier, and earlier and earlier in the east, we see some of those wintertime stars rising up. So let's begin looking east about four hours after sunset. So tonight, that's 9.30 here in Chicago, but around 8.30 p.m. in Chicago after the time change. Well, our first inklings of the winter sky appear in the east with some notable things to look for. First off is the bright star Capella in the constellation of Orija the Charioteer. Capella is quite bright, the fourth brightest star visible from mid-northern latitudes, and outshone in the sky at this hour only by Vega, high above in the Summer Triangle. From Chicago, Capella only goes below the horizon for a brief time, about three hours per day. If you drive a little farther north, a little bit north of Milwaukee, from there, Capella is a circumpolar star, never setting and visible any clear night of the year. Well, even in light polluted skies, Capella shines through, and you should have no issues spotting it in the evenings for the rest of the year. As far as seeing anything else in this constellation, the five bright stars form a sort of oblong pentagon, and there is a small triangle of stars near Capella that's called the Kids. That's meant to represent the goat kids that Orija the Charioteer is holding. Our next two noticeable things are in the constellation of Taurus, the bull. Look for the bright star Aldebaran. That's traditionally one of the eyes of the bull. And it's part of this V shape of stars that make up the face of the bull. His horns extend to the left. And in fact, one of the horns is borrowed by Orija to form that oblong pentagon shape. Above the V shape is the beautiful cluster of stars known as the Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters. This cluster contains over a thousand stars, but with the naked eye, there are usually six or seven to be seen, and occasionally more with very dark skies and sharp eyesight. It's also a great target for some simple astrophotography. I took this image the other night with a Pixel 4 smartphone in astrophotography mode from the light pollution of Chicago. I was able to capture quite a few stars in the Pleiades, and lots of recent smartphones have a similar feature, and you might be surprised at the pictures you can get, even from city skies. Binoculars do give a terrific view, and a telescope can begin to pick out some of the nebulosity here, dust and gas, which these stars are passing through. The dust and the gas is illuminated by the light from these stars, giving the whole scene a bluish, wintry tinge. Next episode, I plan to talk all about the upcoming near-total lunar eclipse on November 19th. But for now, I'll mention that during the eclipse, the moon will be right near the Pleiades star cluster in the sky. Well, for tonight, much lower on the horizon at this time, but certainly visible if you have a nice clear view to the east, Orion the Hunter is here. His bright belt of three stars is rising at quite a reasonable time right now, and it'll be up earlier and earlier for the next couple of months, until eventually it'll be already in the sky at sunset. Just two months ago, you would have had to wait up until 1 or 2 in the morning, but here he is, visible in the middle part of the evening. You'll have to wait a little bit longer for the rest of the constellation to clear the horizon, but already you can trace out the belt and see the bright stars Betelgeuse and Rigel making a shoulder and knee of the Great Hunter. A little bit later in the night, if you've got binoculars or a telescope, give a look for the Great Orion Nebula in the area known as the Sword of Orion. That's below the belt. 
This is a huge star-forming region, visible to the naked eye from dark skies. And if you've got some astrophotography equipment, this is a very fun object to image. And there are others in this same area, including the famous Horsehead Nebula, that's right near the star Alnitak, the leftmost star of Orion's belt, as seen from the northern latitudes. Also visible just rising here are the twin stars of Gemini, Pollux, and Castor. These may be low right now, but by much later tonight, they'll be almost at the top of the sky. And throughout the winter, they're almost easy to miss because they're so high up in the early part of the evening. Well, if you aren't out quite late enough to see these early winter sights, or you're just out earlier and need something to look for before these things rise, there's plenty to look for right after sunset, so here are a few suggestions. Venus is continuing its very bright, though low, appearance in the southwest after sunset. On the night of Sunday the 7th, Venus will be joined by a very thin crescent moon, and the following night on the 8th, the moon will be to the upper left of Venus. The following night, look for the moon to begin passing by the planets Saturn and Jupiter in the sky. On the 9th, it'll be to the lower right of Saturn. On the 10th, it'll be in between the two planets. And by the night of the 11th, the first quarter moon will be just below Jupiter. Any of these nights will provide an excellent opportunity to see the craters and mountains on the moon with the aid of a small backyard telescope and even a small scope is going to show you more detail than you might think possible. That's what we have for you today. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Happy stargazing, and we'll see you next time.